Well, hello, everybody. My name is Martin Werner. I'm an SE at Fortinet. And it's my pleasure to present you today the, the Forti client to show you what the Forti client is and what the solutions we have in the Forti client, the possibilities, how you can use it, and some technical details. And if you like, of course, you can at the end of my presentation ask me some questions about um, for that. Let's jump in. As you could see here, it's 40 client is a fabric agent, it's a remote access agent, it's an endpoint protection. So it's not only an EPP client or not only a VPN client. So it's combined with different modules to uh, fulfill different needs behind. And of course, you don't have to use every of these module. You can uh, enable or disable that as you need. And this is really to show you the possibilities with this client. You see here more a little bit in detail what I mentioned before. The resolution overview at the one hand, it's a classical VPN client as well. So you could use it to connect to your um, to your office from remote with SSL VPN, with IPsec VPN. And new is now we also support the whole CTNA stuff, the zero trust network access stuff. But the only thing you need to use that is an, uh, a 40 gate with uh, 40 OS uh, 7.0 and then you can use CTNA for uh, to connect to every resource behind you like and as you could see also we have this auto connect option with single sign on and of course there's also the SAML support for the authentication part. Also a good point is this fabric integration that means if you if uh, a 40 gate, the 40 client is able to communicate with the 40 gate and give the 40 gate some information about the health status about the client, especially uh, regarding vulnerabilities. So, what kind of vulnerabilities are found on the client can give this information to the 40 gate. And on the 40 gate, then you can create some playbooks and define what happens if a client has a critical uh, vulnerability, as an example, to send them to a special VLAN to block the access or just to give you the information on the photo gate and that you see, okay, I have some client with critical vulnerabilities and this is something I have to fix. Also, there's a, a classical, let me say, EPP or endpoint security part in it, which is not only with a uh, classical antivirus, it's also with the vulnerability management, as mentioned before, so the client can scan the machine and can show you what kind of vulnerabilities is found on the machine. Um, we are able to also fix some of these vulnerabilities. So you can go to the management console, press fix, and then a lot of uh, applications, we are able to download the patch for that and to install the patch automatically in the background. For this application, which is not possible, then the user have to update the software by itself, or you can maybe uh, fulfill that also with a uh, software distribution. Also, we have a web and video filter. The good part here is the web filter means you can create some rules, which means classical, nobody is allowed to use gaming website or pornography website and all this kind of stuff. And this will work even if the client is not connected to your VPN or to the SASE solution or something else. So this policy runs directly on the client, no matter where he's connected, no matter where he is. Uh, so that means the user never have access, as an example, to this gaming website. If you have a VortiGate, you're also able to synchronize that. That means that the Forti client has the same rules as the VortiGate has regarding web filtering. The really cool thing is you don't have to care about any pack files or this kind of stuff. So you just synchronize this policy. Client leaves the office, goes to a hotel or home, connect to his home wireless, and he still has the same policies running and uh, is not able to connect to websites you don't like to do. Also, you could see there's a ransomware or the anti-ransomware part. Um, it's clear this, of the one hand is detection uh, uh, capability. On the other hand is that we also have a uh, backup mechanism in place, which means if an uh, unknown uh, application touches some files and makes some changes that we back up these files in the background. And then after that, you realize maybe it was a ransomware. You can restore these files. And uh, in state before, uh, this good protection against ransomware. Botnet protection, that means we check what kind of uh, communication will be happening on the client outside. And if you see there's a botnet communication, we are able to block that. 
and maybe it could be interesting also removable media controls so that means you can allow or disallow usb sticks on your machine you can block usb ports as an example or you just can say uh, just allow my usb sticks from my company and any auto will be blocked automatically which is not here is then uh, we have also behavior based detection which is today i would say the most in, uh, uh, most important part in an epp solution which means we check what this in software is doing, which processes are running, which changes are happening in the registry, uh, which connections will be open to the internet. And based on these connections and based on this behavior, the system can uh, then decide to say, mm, okay, that looks bad. I blocked that without any knowledge if it's malware or not. Or he can say, or the system can say, yeah, no, that looks uh, like it. Um, I let it run, uh, run, everything is fine. So this is really a full blown EPP solution. Important to know there, so because there's a lot of discussion outside, we have some customers that are using, unfortunately, the Windows Defender as an example. If you say, hey, I just need it for my remote connection as an example, or I like to have the fabric integration, but I don't need the EPP stuff, you are easily to, uh, uh, able to disable all this EPP stuff and uh, let run your existing uh, AV or EPP solution. So no interfering issues there. So that means you can really use the for the client, for the remote connections, for the fabric integration, and use your existing EPP solution for the client protection. And at least we have the possibility to use the, the management server for for the client, which is called EMS, uh, in the cloud, if you like. So that's hosted by Fortinet, so you don't have care, uh, take care about the, the backup and the availability of this uh, management server. Uh, the client can connect from everywhere in the world directly to up, uh, to update um, for policy changes and all this. But also, if you don't like to go into the cloud with this solution, we offer still an on-premise version, which is running on Windows uh, Server. So you install the management server in your environment um, as classical as you know. And this is the point we, we talk about the centralized management. You could see here, configure, deploy, and manage for the client. So which means you can deploy the client, you can configure the client from the management console, of course. And as you could see, there's also an integration into LDAP or AD or um, AD uh, in Azure to um, get uh, access to all this group, to make these um, group settings, to set policies based on uh, departments and all this kind of stuff. You have this real-time endpoint monitoring, which means you always see what's going on on my clients. If it's a client infected, as an example, is a VPN connection open? Um, is the software installed, which maybe I don't like, all this kind of stuff. So we have the full visibility of what's going on on my clients. You could see here also the remote actions. You could make an anti-malware scanning, uh, vulnerability scanning. Or if the local firewall on the machine or on the Forte client is enabled, you could also make an endpoint quarantine, which means you say the local firewall, okay, block these and these and these uh, connections, just allow connection as an example to the EMS server for update and don't allow any other connection as an example. Also, we have a uh, software inventory. This means in the background, the client will in a regular uh, uh, time will check what kind of software is installed on the machines and give this feedback. So that's useful if you don't like to have, as an example, Dropbox in your environment, Teams, uh, not Teams, uh, Team Viewer, uh, or something else, then you got the information which clients have is it installed, and then maybe you can write them an email and say, hey, please deinstall, or uh, you have a software distribution which you say, okay, I just deinstall the application, or the other thing is maybe you create a policy on the FortiGate or on the Forti client, which you say, okay, I don't allow any access outside of this uh, application. So makes sense. So because if you can't connect to Dropbox with the Dropbox client, then it's useless to use it. Uh, file quarantine management. It says, uh, shows you what uh, files are in the quarantine, and then you can say, okay, I can release that because maybe it was a false positive, or you just can delete it. Uh, up to you and high scalable means uh, one uh, EMS server could handle up to 50,000 uh, clients but you also could use more than one client uh, EMS server to grow up this number uh, as you like and as you need. 
You see here, this is what I mentioned with this connection. So we have this endpoint management server. We could send all the telemetry data, the central management and other things. And especially, and the most important thing is send the CTNA tags to the VortiGate. The CTNA tags uh, could be useful also if you don't like to use CTNA in a classical way, but you like to use the tags, which means you could say in this tag, say, check the client if it's compliance regarding AV. Means please check AV is running, and it would be nice if the signatures for the AV client is not older than seven days or five days or whatever. If it is all fine, the FortiGate could say, yeah, he, this client is compliant, I let him in, he can connect, he can open the VPN connection, whatever he like. If he's not compliant, the FortiGate could say, no, I don't allow you to open up the VPN connection, or I don't allow you connection to some critical systems and block that. That has nothing to do with this, let me say, uh, CTNA connection, but you could use the tags to uh, rise your security level in your environment. You really know if any client who has connection inside of my company or from outside to inside, I'm sure this client must be compliant regarding some rules, especially also vulnerabilities, so I don't allow any machines with uh, critical vulnerabilities in my environment and so on. Okay. And you could see here, what I mentioned is this is the security posture enforcement. So this information is sent from the EMS to the FortiGate, and then the FortiGate knows what he has to check and to ask the client and then decide what's going on. And see here the fabrication, also the real time protection, quarantine VPN client, and again the CTNA text check and the tunnel management. So you see that a lot of stuff is regarding CTNA. But it's not only CTNA, it's also for the security posture management. And as I mentioned before, to use these tags. So just to be sure that the client is connected in my network, is compliant, has a minimum of security requirements fulfilled. And if not, he got to a special, let me say, uh, quarantine network or whatever, the special VLAN. And then uh, my support uh, employees could take care about what are going on there. And, check what's on the client running. So as you see here, we have different uh, editions or positionings. We have three editions at the end. We have this VPN CTNA uh, edition, which is, let me say, more or less the full-blown edition. Uh, sorry, the, the, the connection edition, which is really used for VPN connection or CTNA connection, is without, let me say, all this EPP stuff. Uh, we have the EPP APT edition. This is the full blown. This is including the, the VPN CTNA part, and it's also including all the, the security um, features like AV, like behavior based, uh, like web filtering, vulnerability management, and so on and so on. And we have a special solution for Chromebooks, um, which is, let me say, here in, in Europe or especially in Switzerland is not a, not a topic or I never had to do with that so far, but it's a huge topic in the, in the States. There's a lot of uh, schools using Chromebooks and we can support them then also with um, remote access for your capabilities over the Forti client. You see here a little bit more in detail, the different uh, components which are in. Uh, this is more just for you as an overview that you'll little bit see more details, what is included in which edition and maybe what I need or what I don't need. Mm. And then if you go to the strengths, you see here, it's clearly the fabric integration at the end of the day. Of course, our EPP solution is, uh, is good, as good as the rest on the market. Um, like the behavior-based detection, like the AV detection and all this kind of stuff. But the strength we have is clearly the integration into the fabric and especially for the remote access, not only for the VPN, also for the ZTNA part. And in my personal opinion, a strong, strong message we have in the for the client is vulnerability management. So um, I would say I'm since nearly 20 years in the endpoint market, I don't know which of the major player has a vulnerability management integrated and which is in my opinion a really really strong strong uh, advantage regarding the competition that you have this completely integrated and just gives you an overview of what's going on on the clients and 
I guess you are sure you know that already, but vulnerability management or vulnerabilities in general is one of the biggest issues we have today. And it's just really important at minimum to know what kind of vulnerabilities I have on my clients. And then maybe I can react or I can make something out of that. But it's always a pain if you didn't know what uh, kind of vulnerabilities I have in my environment. And then you read in the newspaper, LogJ or whatever, there is a big vulnerability and you have no clue if I'm affected or not. This is one of, in my opinion, one of the most important part to know that. And even you have that if you only go with this uh, EPP, uh, with this uh, CTNA uh, edition, so with the small one, without this EPP stuff, the vulnerability management is also there included. So this is more than the marketing blah blah behind, but if you like, <laughs> you can read it. So let's start a little bit more to dig into the details. We have here this uh, part with the remote connections. Uh, could see here, this integration is not only the client, it's the idea that everything we have can integrate into this fabric. Uh, just an example, if you're an existing 40 gig customer and you're using a 40 analyzer, it's really cool stuff because the 40 client, which means the EMS server, will also send all his information to the 40 analyzer, which means you at the end of the day, you have a single pane of glass to see what's going on, not only on the network side in my environment, but also on the endpoint side, you really see then the whole picture what's going on in my company. And you see here, this uh, network context endpoint telemetry. So this is on the 40 gate. So if we have a 40 client, the information will be sent to the 40 gate. And then you can see here in the 40 gate, what's going on. You can dig into the client, got all the information about the clients, not only security related, also from a uh, hardware point of view, also from a software point of view. You just see in the side of the 40 gate, okay, what kind of client is that? This is maybe one of my clients, this is not one of my clients, this is a uh, wrong client or whatever. So you got just more information and you can create out of that then more actions to uh, decide what to do. And cool is also the security rating. You know that already from a 40 gate, but now with the 40 client, also the information from the 40 client will into, go into the security rating and gives you a better view and a better picture where you maybe have some weakness, which you have to change something or you have to react something or to, to, to do something. But you just got more information, better information, deeper information. And of course, you could use it all for the automation part, not only for the file quarantine, also the file submit for sandbox analysis, this auto patching stuff, the compliance enforcement, which is really an important point. And of course, you can automatically quarantine the endpoint, not only over the 40 client, you can also use that in combination with the 40 gate or even better with the 40 analyzer, with the playbooks, that you really can create some playbooks which really say, okay, client is not compliant, go into this VLAN, give a message to the, to the support uh, or send the um, client a message or put the client out of my network or block this port, block this IP address and so on and so on. So you could be really creative there and uh, you know, the space, <laughs> space is the limit, <laughs> the sky is the limit. <laughs> you see here, this is picture from the playbooks which you can create and you could see here compromised host uh, and, and so on and so on. And it's really cool if you could use the information from a 40 client there as well, and not only based on the networks, also based on the, the client side or the endpoint side. More, more details, it's just some pictures to give you an idea of what you are able to do. Uh, and as you could see, this, is, uh, this was integrated in the 40 gate. If you use the 40 analyzer, you have a lot more of options and uh, information there, but you also could use it already if you have an 40 gate. So the web filtering we, we talked about uh, is really also interesting just because not only the defense in depth stuff or this AI stuff and uh, web posture stuff, which is from a technical point of view, very interesting, but really interesting the web filtering part is that you have it on the client. And maybe you, you saw it not only in the news, maybe you also affected uh, regarding this COVID pandemic and all this homeworking, a lot of companies started to buy some solutions like SESI, yeah, we can name it like Cscaler or Netscope or whatever, just to make sure that the clients still have uh, web security on the machine. 
um, if they're not connected to to um, to the headquarters example a lot of companies had an issue with this backhauling traffic which means uh, the client opens up the vpn and then goes surfing in the internet maybe watching netflix Clicks, listening to Spotify, and all this traffic was sent through the VPN to the headquarter and was going to the main proxy, which is, let me say, useless to use this way. And a lot of people start using split VPN and then realized, ah, okay, but then I don't have the proxy anymore, which means then for the client, he can do more or less in the internet what he like to do. And you maybe want to block that, and then the people start to acquire solutions like Zscale or whatever. By the way, good solutions, not against these companies but the, the reason behind was for many clients or many customers was just to make sure that they have a protection in place even if they are not connected to the headquarters as example and you can solve this issue with the 40 client because you have all this uh, rule set on the client independent where he is independent uh, where he is connected is always active always running and you know the clients are protected against web uh, malicious code and even you know they are not able to connect them to some suspicious websites or the usual suspect websites <laughs> then let's dig a little bit in in the secure remote access for those for those of you who are, which are not attend the, the great session from andreas tisho with ctna just a really short wrap up here what is ctna you see, for CTNA, you need the 40 OS, which means the 40 gate, at minimum 40 OS 7.0. And you need the CTNA agent policy orchestration, which means the 40 client and an EMS server. This is the two things you need. Uh, additional, if you like, you could use our authentication solutions, like a 40 authenticator or 40 token. But it's not a must. You can use your existing uh, authentication solution, whatever you have. So we don't care. But from our side of view, you, you really need this 40 gate and 40 client. And this gives you then the possibility to use CTNA as an example together, if you like, with VPN, or you can start to replace your VPN with CTNA. And in a nutshell, let me say VPN connects you to the network and CTNA connects you to the resource, which means if you, as an example, a customer is in a hotel, like to access the SharePoint server inside of your company, he starts the VPN and then, of course, he has access to the SharePoint, but he has access to the whole network. He has access to the file server, to the print server, to whatever. Maybe it could be good or not. From a security point of view, it's not good because he only needs the connection to the SharePoint. I don't like to open up the whole network connection if you only need one server. And this is where CTNA comes into the play. With CTNA, you open up a dedicated tunnel from the client to the SharePoint server, and that's it. It is one tunnel to one resource, makes one connection there, and the client could use this connection, could work, everything. It's, let me say, more or less feeling the same like VPN. Difference a little bit is he don't have to, uh, to open up in VPN or whatever. He just give in the, the, let me say, name or IP address in the browser to the resource, and then in the background, the client starts the tunnel. Um, and then if you say, yeah, but okay, now he needs access to the SharePoint, he has the connection to the SharePoint, but he also needs a connection to my local mail server or to my print server. Easy as that. Then if he requests this connection, the client will open up another dedicated tunnel to this resource and so on and so on. Could be at the end of the day that you have 10 or 15 tunnels at the same time open on the client, but this is no problem. That is something which has the client to handle. It's easy, but from a security point of view, it's a great enhancement just because you know there's only one connection from the client to this resource and he's not able to make, let me say, any sniffing or an Nmap or whatever. You see here, you can combine that with multi-factor and anything else with the Active Directory, and you see this automatic transplant and crypto tunnels. You, you also could use split tunneling, possession, and so on and so on. But you have here some good examples. You see here block access for security risk endpoints, what I mentioned before. You can combine that with the CTNA, but you could also use it without CTNA. When you see here, uh, the user check with the, in the group finance, he needs access to the finance internet. Yeah, everything is cool. And you see now, Kate is in the group engineering. 
but she has a critical vulnerability on his machine, open up, uh, gives this information back to the central management. The central management sent <coughs> this information to Fortigate, and the Fortigate knows now, aha, uh -huh, Kate's uh, machine has a critical vulnerability. She's not allowed to access to uh, the internet. So, which means she has to fix this issue first. Uh, you could do that maybe through EMS. As you mentioned before, you send to the automation, uh, automation part an email to the support, uh, open a ticket, and the support can maybe try to fix that issue, send the patch or update the software or whatever. And after that, she can, can access again. Well, also, cool, you could use the, uh, all this stuff based on AD groups. So with the AD group, he checks, okay, where is the client? And then decide, oh, okay, this is Kate again. She now changes from, in, uh, from engineering to sales. A bad move in my opinion, but okay. <laughs> and now she get access to, uh, no longer to engineering, but now she got access to sales. And at least you can also restrict the access for unknown endpoints. That means you not only can check compliance status of endpoint you can also check if this in general this is my endpoint which means you can say check if this client which tried to connect is a member of the domain or is that a certificate or is there a file on it or whatever normally and the easiest way is check please is this member of the domain if he's not a member of the domain of course he get, don't get any access to anything it's an easy way to uh, to forbid any bring your own device uh, connections um, as you maybe know on the VPN side, it was really easy, and I guess the most of us, especially from the technical uh, guys, did it in the past. Uh, maybe you took your laptop at home, worked, and then maybe realized uh, it would be easier if I could work from my desktop at home. I have more power, maybe, and blah, blah, blah. Then you copy the VPN client uh, on your disk machine, open up the connection, make the authentication, ta-da. You was connected with your private machine to the company network. Yeah. And it was really hard to forbid that. The advantages for CTNA, uh, of course, CTNA client, also VPN client, it's in my opinion, which is really a huge enhancement. So for a lot of customers, it's not, uh, not possible. It's a lot of work if they say, ah, okay, I will not change now from VPN to CTNA. Honestly, CTN is a really cool technology, but maybe you you hear through my, from my examples, you have to create for every resource a policy. And if you have 500 applications, it means at the end of the day, you have to create 500 policies for that. And that is not so easy and needs some time. And maybe you say, ah, I don't have to use CTNA for every connection, like and maybe an in internal uh, marketing website where there's no critical stuff on it. So we have a lot of customers which say, okay, you know what? I still use my VPN connection, but I use also ZTNA for all my critical systems, which means I don't allow the VPN to connect to critical systems. For that, the user has to use ZTNA. And you, that means you can use both worlds and you have uh, less um, work to do in the background, but to take the advantage of the CTNA and to make sure, okay, all my critical uh, systems are more secure than before with the VPN. And of course, no license required. Yeah, it's not required on the 40 OS side, but you need the licensed uh, 40 client. CTNA will not work with the v free VPN version of the 40 client. That's maybe important to know. So then let's see here some other options, but I really go through, but let's see now the detection block and malware and advanced threat part. As I mentioned before, we have a classic, let me say, EPP part in this 40 client. We have a sandbox integration. We have, let me say, three options there. We have the classical on-premise sandbox. If you're on a Fortinet sandbox customer, you could use your on-premise Fortinet sandbox. You could use the cloud sandbox from us, or you could use, if you will, uh, use EMS cloud, the integrated cloud sandbox in the EMS, which in the background at the end of the day also connects to the cloud sandbox from us, but from a licensing point of view, some different. Good for you is it's integrated completely, and then you can really say and decide, okay, 
with uh, easy uh, easy handling. Every file which a client with uh, downloads, which we don't know what it is, we never saw before, block that in the background, make the scan in the sandbox, and if the sandbox says it's okay, release it to the client, and if it's not okay, send the client a message, and uh, it's malicious, and we deleted it. Then the anti-malware part, you see here pattern-based malware engine. I know uh, maybe a lot of people are saying, ah, this is old school, nobody knows, uh, needs that, and uh, bah, it's that, this is a uh, that technology. No, it is not, it still has its uh, existence. Just because this is the fastest and most secure um, technology to detect malicious code. It's a hash key behind, we check the file, the hash key matches, Yoohoo, we know that is malicious, chalk boom, delete, that's it. That is really needs nearly no resources on the machine and it's really no false positive behind. Also, which a lot of people forget, we need this technology also to make a whitelist or a allow list in the background. So why we should scan, as an example, uh, a word exe if we know it is the original, a clean Microsoft Word exe? There's no need to scan that. But the system maybe don't know that which kind of uh, Word exe is. That why. We also use this technology for allow list, which means we have all the hash keys inside for the good software, which means, okay, the system touches where the access is, background checks, okay, hash key, yeah, it's the same, it's the, it's the clear or the, the, the right uh, version of uh, word access, which means for the whole EPP part, okay, you don't have to scan that, go on. And that's why this uh, technology is still uh, needs there to be and has it had uh, has its advantages of course the detection of let me say this new uh, apts and all this stuff is then mostly on uh, behavior based detection which I explained before we will check what's going on in the machine what kind of processes will be started and, and the system can decide yeah it's good or it's bad you see here the, the enhanced for the sandbox integration. You got all this information there. You see the rating from where it came. So you could download and uh, the the report to see more details, what was affected, and uh, to get more and more information about. More interesting there is for me, maybe to figure out which of my clients sent the most data uh, or files into the sandbox, just to get an idea to see maybe okay. Last three months, there are three employees which send 80% of all files from a sandbox. Maybe it is worth to discuss with them what the hell they are doing the whole day in the internet or whatever. And, and maybe to teach them a little bit and uh, to say, hey, would it be nice if you didn't click on any link which you get from somewhere. Yeah, and you see them here more and more details and the vulnerabilities behind and all this stuff. Then the vulnerability dashboard, it shows you in one view how many vulnerabilities are found in my environment. And of course, you can then dig in to see uh, which clients are affected. And this is really good just to see really in less than a minute what's going on in the environment. I see here seven critical vulnerabilities. Okay, maybe I have to take care about that. And you see here Adobe Reader X is no longer supported. I have five hosts, there still has this version on it. Okay, maybe I have to delete that or to block that or whatever, but you really know where I have to take action and, and you nearly know what is the status of my environment and my endpoint environment. Also see here in more detail also the CV numbers, the 40 guard numbers, uh, which category behind, uh, is there a patch available or not? Also, this means you've got not only the information what kind of vulnerabilities I have, I also got the information how I can fix that, and also got the information how this vulnerability works. At the end, could be that you have a vulnerability, but if you're reading about, you will figure out, oh, okay, I'm affected, of course, because I have this vulnerability, but this and these machines are not accessible from outside, as an example, so they are, at the end of the day, not really affected by this vulnerability, and so on. And also here you could go in details and say, okay, show me all uh, endpoints that are affected. And okay, two admins, maybe a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Then even again, all this visibility stuff, the hygiene control, the endpoint protection and all that stuff and with the secure remote access is together inside of the Forti client. And as I mentioned before, you don't have to need every of these modules. You can enable, disable different modules. Maybe if you say, yeah, I already use Zscaler. I'm happy with Zscaler. Yeah, no problem at all. Then uh, disable the web filtering part of the Forti client. It's, if you don't need it, no problem at all. Maybe you say, yeah, we're using Windows Defender. We are happy with it. Yeah, fine. Then disable the EPP part on the Forti client. If you don't need it, no problem for us. Uh, even maybe you don't have also to need to license that. You only maybe say, okay, I need to remote access stuff. Then you go with the remote license and you don't have to pay even for that. So that's my overview and I see a little bit too fast. I have, uh, sorry, yeah, thanks yeah. a lot. First of all, Martin, but I have one question regarding the EMS, the 40 gate, 40 analyzer. Mm -hmm. I can see, or you told us, yeah, you can tweak and tune quite a lot. Yep. Uh, do I really need the EMS server? Yes, the EMS is a must have for CTNA or for this, uh, let me say, EPP stuff or whatever. So, and I can also run the whole client without 40 gate and 40 analyzer yep. in this case. Yep. Then I go with the EMS and I can configure all the stuff. On the EMS, there. yeah. So, well, uh, yeah, and the next <laughs> one is uh, regarding 40 analyzer. Mm -hmm. So I did see there you have a lot. I, I did also see in the slides that you jumped from, from one management to the other <laughs> one. Uh, so there are really a lot of more possibilities if I have an analyzer mm -hmm. than if I only have the EMS. Yeah, of course, because the EMS is... Uh his own ecosystem, which is really only needed to manage and maybe to deploy or to send policies to the 40 client. And he only gives you the information what the client source. But the analyzer also has the possibility to grab the information from a sandbox, from a uh, 40 gate, from uh, APs or access points, and so on and so on. And then you can correlate all this information together and then you get the full picture and the full view what's going on in my environment. As an example, you see on the client, oh, there was a malicious software and an analyzer, you can really check how it was the way to the client. Maybe, okay, it came through email or came through the 40 gate from a website or whatever. Gives you much more visibility and much more flexibility, yeah. And maybe you can show the slide where you have the comparison between the, the EPP and the CTNA. It's somewhere in the beginning. Yes, yeah, no, one further, one in front. Yes, yeah, there's one. one. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So, do I understand it right? That are also the, the points I can license. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, the IT hygiene fabric agent, the secure remote access yeah. part, and the protection part. So, I can mix and match it. Oh no no. Like? oh, no, 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 <laughs> there's no mention it. Two editions, or let me three with the Chromebook, but let me say for Switzerland, there are two editions, this VPN CTNA edition, and then the EPP and APT edition. Okay. And then what I mentioned, if you also example say, hey, we already have an EPP solution, trend, so forth, whatever, you name it, we don't need that, or we don't plan to replace that in the next two years, then you can say, okay, you can start just with the VPN CTNA, solution and if you decide maybe decide maybe two years later yeah, okay maybe it makes sense to also put the EPP part into the 40 client then you can change the licensing and upgrade uh, to the EPP APT solution yeah. cool. and one last question from my side uh, regarding the, the web security part mm -hmm. can I also run that without the 40 gate yeah of course yeah so I really I'm free if I'm going with the EMS yep. and having the solution so I can there do my rules yep. and I'm sure that nobody is going to these ugly yep. sites. Even if you have already a 40 gate, but maybe you say, no, I don't like the synchronization. I like to have a special subset for that. You don't have to need the synchronization feature from the 40 gate web filtering. So also you could say, no, if the client is in the network, 
Then he got the policies which are running on the FortiGate. If he leaves the network, he gets his own subset of policies for in for this uh, environment or for, for this um, scenario. Cool. Really great solution. I think uh, worth it to have a deeper look. Um, of course, if any partner has a question, I mean, Martin is yeah. more than happy uh, to push it or to answer the, the questions and to give you deeper insights. So if you have any questions, unmute and just ask your questions. But the silence is tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's too much information, but I, I really think, uh, yeah, it's always like this. If you are drilling into a topic and for me, especially if I did not have a deeper look before, it's like, oh, overwhelming. But uh, as soon, I think you drill down and I drill down, the questions will come. And as we mentioned, ask us, ask Martin, we are more than happy to help you. And the recording of that session will be available in our YouTube channel afterwards and to the participants, we will also send the presentation so that you have everything and yeah. Let the mic open for the next five minutes and afterwards I would say enjoy your week. Happy New Year for those who didn't get it before and let's rock with Fortinet. <laughs>